Okay, so in this lesson, we'll be looking at fertilization and pregnancy. So first of all, uh, let's start with talking about there are different stages of reproduction. So before we get to the fertilization stage, some certain steps have to happen um, between a cow and a bull. So there's mainly six, broadly six steps or stages of reproduction. The first one uh, we have talked about is oestrus. So basically this is when the female goes into heat and she allows the bull to actually mate with her. Then secondly is the actual act of mating. The, ma the male then will mount the female and release, release his sperm into her reproductive tract. Again, very vital step. Without this, fertilization can't happen. Then thirdly, after mating, or yes, this usually happens after mating, is ovulation because she goes into heat before ovulation actually happens. Ovulation is when a mature egg cell is released into the fallopian tube. So again, um, um, at this stage when ovulation happens and the egg cell is in the fallopian tube, usually um, mating would have happened. So meaning the sperm cell will be there um, ready to meet the egg cell when it's released into the fallopian tube. And fourthly, you have the act of fertilization. That is when your sperm cell meets its egg cell. The sperm cell fuses with the egg cell basically, and that's your fertilization. Fifthly is gestation. So gestation, please remember the word, basically is a fancy term for pregnancy. So when we talk about animals, we actually use the term gestation. Pregnancy technically is more a human term. So gestation is development, a period, developmental period of the zygote into a fetus and then eventually it ends with birth. So gestation begins with the zygote, it um, turns into a blastocyst, then eventually an embryo, and then from the embryo into a fetus, and then again it ends when the baby is born and then it's known as a calf in the case of a cow. Then sixthly, of the sixth part, is parturition basically, and that's the fancy term for birth. So in animals, we usually talk about parturition. So this is the ejection of the fetus and also the placenta from the uterus of the mother. So this is basically the, when the baby is born or for the animal, a calf is born. But usually we talk about the ejection of the fetus. It's still a fetus while it's inside the womb. As soon as it comes outside, then we talk about a baby or a calf. But please remember that the placenta also comes out. So both parturition is about the fetus and the placenta. Okay, here at the bottom we see a nice picture of a very, very pregnant cow. Okay, so the fertilization process, um, quick in some semi-detail. So here we have an egg cell, and the egg cell now has two potential sperm cells that want to fertilize it or penetrate into the egg cell. So this side is just a, a zoomed-in image of what happens. Here we have our egg cell, and here we have one sperm cell, the lucky one, that is going to basically, um, in four main steps, fertilize the egg cell. So number one here represents the sperm reaches the egg cell. Nothing fancy about that. Secondly, what happens is the acrosome in the sp sperm head itself is then released. And remember, the acrosome has enzymes that now specifically will digest this outer layer of the egg cell because at this point, the sperm cell can't get into the egg cell. So now, the enzymes are eating away at this layer, and this layer is known as the zona pellucida. You don't have to remember the word uh, or to be able to write it down, but it's good to memorize it just in case they use the term. So just know that the zona pellucida is this outside membrane of the egg cell, and the sperm cell must basically eat its way through here to get to the nucleus of the egg cell. Okay, and thirdly, what happens here is now the sperm head penetrates the inner membrane, of the egg cell and makes the egg cell impenetrable for other sperm. So basically what happens as soon as the sperm has come in and has um, penetrated the second membrane, there are specialized chemicals that are released on the inside of the egg cell. The image doesn't show at the moment. You guys don't have to remember the name of the chemicals. But the chemicals then causes other sperm not to be able to come into the egg cell. So this is actually a defense, how the egg cell protects itself so that that you only have a diploid cell after fertilization. So to prevent any triploid cells from forming, you just want two nuclei, one from the sperm cell and one from the egg cell to fuse. You don't want two sperm cells to fuse with one egg cell. So it's basically just to protect um, the new baby so that it develops normally. Then fourthly, we see here that the nucleus of the sperm head will eventually fuse with the nucleus of the egg cell. So basically, yes, you will have a haploid nucleus, 
that fuses with another haploid um, nucleus and you'll get a diploid organism. So meaning this organism then will have the full, of, full amount of chromosomes it is supposed to have. And in a nutshell, basically, this is what you guys have to remember for fertilization. Okay, so then you have certain stages of pregnancy. So here I just included the three main ones. So the first stage, which is by the way, we have a picture here of a blastocyst, is the ovum phase. So just for a um, basic reference, it usually lasts 12 to 14 days. The first 12 to 14 days is the ovum phase. So basically fertilization, this is the fertilization to the implantation of the blastocyst into the endometrium lining. So meaning from, from fertilization after egg cell meets sperm cell um, to the time when the blastocyst implants itself into the endometrium lining, that's what happens. So meaning zygote forms and then eventually you have your blastocyst and just before it becomes an embryo, um, that's where this phase ends. So meaning fertilization all the way to implantation is the ovum phase, very short phase. In the second one, you've got a picture of an embryo. It's known as the embryonic phase. So usually this lasts about 13 to 45 days. Um, or it's usually from day 13 to day 45. Eh, I can't remember exactly which one it is, but you know, I think it's the, the generally how long it lasts, 13 to 45 days. So basically this phase is usually when the placenta sustains the embryo. So at this point, we do have the placenta forming around the embryo. And usually within the embryo, tissues and organs are starting to form. So this is now starting to become some kind of animal. You will see the eyes starting to form, hands will start to form, um, all the organs on the inside, the stomach, the digestive tract, all those things are starting to form within the embryo. Okay, and then the last, or usually the third and last phase is known as the fetal phase, usually around 46 to 282 days. So the entire pregnancy generally is about 282 days long for a cow generally. Okay, so basically in this phase what happens, the embryo becomes the fetus, so then it's known as the fetus, but just when the characteristics of the animal starts to be visible, so meaning it starts to look like a cow, you can see the head, the tail, the, the feet, the legs, everything that tells you that this is going to be what species is going to be, and then it's known as a fetus. So, and as well, apart from being able to see these characteristics, you can also see the embryonic membranes. So meaning the chorion, the amnion, and some of the other layers on the inside as well. So you literally can see um, the amnion with the amniotic fluid with your embryo on the inside, well, embryo that's now fetus on the inside. So it'll be basically your fetal phase. Okay, so that's basically with your development of um, the young baby or calf in this case but sometimes especially in cows we can have multiple births so meaning twins so technically with twins usually there can be complications because it's not very normal for a cow to have twins but it does happen on rare occasions so basically when an identical twin forms it's when one egg cell or one ovum is released from either one of the ovaries and then is fertilized by one sperm cell so meaning it's the normal fertilization process but then that fertilized egg cell, which is the zygote, for some reason then splits into two to form two embryos. So meaning you still have the normal fertilization, one egg cell, one sperm cell, one zygote, but then it's split um, between it being a zygote and a blastocyst. It's split in half, and now you've got two embryos. So that's when you have identical twins because they're, both of them have the same DNA. But then you also have something called fraternal twins, especially in humans as well. We have the same fraternal twins. What happens here is when two egg cells or two ova are released and fertilized by separate sperm cells. So basically you've got two egg cells and two sperm cells. So this means you'll have two embryos um, that develops to form non-identical twins. And usually for cows, it's different genders. Same thing can happen with humans because there's two sperm cells. The one sperm cell could have been an XX and the other one could have been an XY. We don't know. So the same thing can have happened for cows as well. So it's not always this way. You do get um, non-identical twins that are both girls or both boys, or in this case for the calves, heifers, and bulls. But it could be that one is female and the other one is male. So sometimes it happens to the different genders. Okay, so when you have fraternal twins, and usually when they're different genders, we have something called a free martin. We have talked about this in a previous lesson. So basically a free martin is the female of a non-identical twin pair 
and it usually is or she is usually sterile so she can't reproduce because usually when she comes into contact with a specific hormone of her brother in the womb then this causes her to actually develop a Y chromosome so she technically is a female but if her blood mixes with her brother's blood in the womb then she becomes sterile because of this hormone um, exposure okay so free martin generally is not good but if you do have fraternal twins one male one female it does not necessarily mean there will be a free martin sometimes they're born normal and the the female calf is reproductively can reproduce and the male as well but if for some reason, and again, this is, uh, I don't want to say random, but it doesn't always happen, but there is a reason that it happens that the female's blood mixes with the, the, her brother's blood. It's not supposed to, but sometimes it does. Then this free martin um, thing can, can occur. Okay, and then lastly, why and how would abortion happen? So before we talk about reasons, let's first look again, what is abortion? It's basically the premature premature termination of pregnancy before the gestation period is supposed to be over so the full gestation period is that 282 days roughly for cows that's the full term but abortion is when the pregnancy ends before the baby is supposed to be born so usually an underdeveloped fetus is ejected from um, the uterus okay so reasons for this to happen and again here at the side we actually have a picture of shame one of these rejected fetuses very, very still very small doesn't well it's technically still an embryo very small doesn't even look like a cow yet so reasons for abortions the first thing is usually uterine infection so again if something irritates the cow's um, uterus she could prematurely abort secondly sexually transmitted diseases so if this embryo again was tainted by some kind of disease the body will reject it thirdly a nutrient deficiency if the cow does not get enough food any yeah again she has a lack of nutrients and she can't feed herself and her baby then the body will abort and fourthly hormonal disturbances usually a lack of progesterone because you guys can remember progesterone is actually very important to sustain pregnancy again p pregnancy p progesterone so if there's not enough levels of progesterone the embryo will not be sustained within the uterus then also any stress conditions can also cause the body of the cow to reject something like transportation in bad circumstances and also extreme heat can cause this again if the the body of the cow is under stress then this will happen and also any injury during pregnancy testing so again pregnancy testing um, a vet usually does the same thing as with the artificial insemination where he places his one arm into the anus of the cow to try and feel uh, basically what's happening in the reproductive tract from on, on up top but if this is done in a, in a wrong way he could potentially maybe sever the placenta or something can, ha can happen with the development of this fetus and then he can hurt that and again it can cause an abortion so the vet should know what he's doing and not just anybody should try and do pregnancy testing then also lastly any pasture high in estrogen so this actually goes along with the hormonal disturbances if there is too much estrogen inside the body the levels of progesterone will lower and this can cause also an abortion okay and that is it for this lesson